G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we're going to be covering a tutorial on how to build custom nodes in Dynamo. So this is sort of a part of a lot of videos that I'm covering that sort of go beyond what my channel's covered so far. Um, this includes making custom nodes, packages, and then moving on to Python, which I know a lot of people on the channel are waiting for. So this will be, I guess, one part of four. Uh, my Python series will probably become a much bigger thing, because obviously there's a lot to learn in Python and Dynamo. So today we're focusing on making a custom node. Um, so I guess firstly, just really quickly, we'll touch on why why you even make a custom node because um, you probably need to think about whether you need to make one before you do. Um, but essentially, we just do it to expand Dynamo's capabilities. Um, we can tap into Python. We can simplify things. We can hide very complex functions that we use over and over and over again into one node. Um, and I guess it's easier to deploy these things across machines if they're in a custom node format. And ultimately, we can publish them to the package manager online and share these with the community if we think they're worthwhile. So what is a custom node? So you might have seen them before. Um, if you know such packages like Clockwork and Rhythm and Data Shapes, these are all built out of custom nodes. Um, these are all built by someone, a developer, or just someone with some spare time. And you might have seen some nodes that look a little bit like this, where they've got the, the few boxes behind them. This is typically a custom node that hasn't been packaged into the DLL file of the, pack, of the custom package itself. Um, so these, you can actually right click and edit them. And if you do edit them, you might have noticed before that you end up in this yellow background environment, which is the custom node editing environment. And this is where you can define inputs and outputs and basically build the body of that custom node. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today. Um, you can build what are called zero touch nodes, which essentially they're compressed into the pre-compiled DLL file in the, in the custom package. Um, for anyone that doesn't know what that mean, it means it's okay. It's mostly jargon to me as well. Um, the contents can't easily be accessed by someone. Like you, you can't just right click on the node. Um, and this is usually done to protect the, the hard work that people have put, in, put into the packages. And they're not doing it for malicious reasons. They don't want to stop people from learning but they don't want everyone to just go and copy their node and their code over and over again because custom nodes need a lot of maintenance and they need a lot of um, a lot of love to keep them up to date as Dynamo changes. So if people copied all these nodes and never updated their package, um, you'd have a lot of really broken versions of the same node and no one would know the right one to use. So it's ideally this is where you should head if you're a developer, um, but we're not gonna cover this today because it does require a bit of C-sharp knowledge. Um, so we're just going to focus on building a custom node. So we would typically add custom nodes to a custom package when we're done building them. But today I'm just going to build the node itself and then we'll cover custom packages in the next video. So the custom packages, for those that aren't aware, are typically stored at this path um, if you ever want to access them as well. And this includes the ones that you install from other people's packages too. And I'm actually going to be building my own package. I'm working on just a few basic nodes currently just to get started um, called Crumple, which will be focused on education because um, my last name is Crump. So, so I called it that. Um, it is actually available on my GitHub um, just in a work in progress format if anyone's interested in trying it out. Uh, but I don't want to publish it just yet online because I'd rather develop it a bit more and make sure that all the nodes are working and necessary for people to use. Some nodes in here I'm just building for my own convenience, so I have them in my package. So I may not release some of the nodes online that are already existing in other custom packages. Without further ado, um, let's jump in and learn how to build custom nodes. So I'm just gonna go jump straight into Dynamo. So I'm gonna build a custom node that solves a really common function I find myself doing over and over again. Um, I've already built this node in my custom package, but I'm gonna rebuild it just to show you how I did it. And it's called Kickflip. Um, so essentially what happens when I bring in a lot of Excel data is typically it comes in in rows um, and it also comes in with a header row. So typically what I'll do is I'll go and call on a drop item, a drop items, and I'll drop a header row or I'll drop a certain number of rows. So I'll just drop one row and that will give me all my data. And typically the next thing I do is transpose because I usually prefer to deal with my data in columns because it's much more convenient to have um, the data in sets rather than rows by element. So I'm actually just gonna build a custom node to do these three things. And I'm gonna use a little bit of um, design script as well. So the first thing we can do um, to create a custom node, if we were happy with this as our custom node, all you have to do is go right click, create custom node. 
what it's going to prompt you to do is actually put in some data about your custom node. So there's some really important things to do at this step. Note that in certain packages, there's a hierarchy of uh, headers. So this is going to be defined in how we define the add-on category. First thing we do is we'll just name it. So I'm just going to call this um, testing kickflip. And you can put in a description about your node. It can be really long. It can have enters. This is what the user will see when they hover over your custom node or they see it in a search. So you want to make it meaningful. You want to tell them what the node does, um, ideally what its inputs are and what its expected output should be. That way they know how to use the node without understanding what's inside the custom node itself. So let's just say something like this node, I'll do a really quick description, obviously, just not to waste your time. This node will drop a certain, certain number of items, usually Excel base data headers and then transpose rows to columns as lists. So that would sort of tell them roughly what it does. I think my description for my actual package is a bit better than that, um, but just being quick. So from here, you can actually pick where to put the node. You can actually just go and chuck it under another custom package, which obviously isn't the right thing to do because we don't own the packages. Um, you can see that I've started defining certain areas of my package in Crumple. Um, for now, I'm just gonna make testing. I'm just going to go testing dot and then we'll just say, let's say list because this will be the next level. So we're going to go testing list and we'll just go organize as well. And you can't really see it, but there's a little OK button just hiding below there. So we'll just OK that. And there's our, there's our function. And technically it's not doing anything right now. So we have to probably go and check what's going on in the custom node first. So what we can do is just go edit custom node. And here we are. So we can actually go save as to see where this is stored at the moment. Um, currently it's not stored anywhere. I think it's just within the Dynamo session. It will prompt you to save it before you close Dynamo. If you just want it to be a custom node on your machine, you can just put it under the definitions folder, but you could at this point go to your custom package and save it under the DYF folder if you wanted it to belong to your package. Um, what I might do for now is just make a I'll just make a custom package called, uh, actually I probably won't do that, it's a bit messy. I'll just save it under my definitions for now. And we'll just call it testing kickflip. Um, but usually you put it under a custom package from there. Um, so we need to define inputs and outputs. And what I might do as well is just turn this into design script because I know some people are hoping to see a little bit more design scripts on my on my videos. So let's, um, let's just call on our first line and just say DS core list. Dot, and we're going to do a drop items and when you press bracket it'll tell you what it expects so it expects a list and it expects an amount as an integer so we're just going to call on data as our list as a variable and we're also going to call on call on drop as a variable so immediately we'll get two variables in here so our first thing is going to be our incoming data so we're going to disconnect this here so this is an input so inputs and outputs are special to this environment so these are the things coming into our custom node and these are the things coming out of our custom node. You can have as many as you want and as you add them or change them, the custom node itself will also adapt. So you can see that as I add that, the custom node is updating as well. So what I'll do is I will just call this variable. So the syntax here as well, I probably need to cover what the syntax is. So the first thing you have is just your variable name. That, that would be enough to say that I have an input called data. If you want the data to be a particular type, you can force it as well. So I can say it's a string. And now if you hover over this, it, it, it's converting a non-convertible type because this data isn't a string. It's a list, but you can see there, if you hover over it, it expects a string. You can also set default values. So if I just go like this, and I'll go string equals uh, test. This is the default value if the user doesn't connect anything. So you can see, can't see it right now, but it should, yeah, there you go. So you can see it's got a default value of test at the moment. Um, it's set to disabled at the moment because I need to build my custom node first and then place it again. Um, but at the moment, that's what it would do. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this variable be flexible. It can be anything, so it's data. The next thing we need is a drop number. So this one, we do wanna set a default value. We'll set a default of one. So we'll just say, um, we're gonna call this kick. So how much are we kicking out of our data? 
I'm going to say kick semicolon and we're going to have an integer. So we'll have int equals one. So by default, we'll be kicking out one row if the user doesn't specify. It can be really useful to set default values when you have a very common value that you always use and then maybe just occasionally you want to do something different. What we're going to do now is continue our code block. So we're actually going to call this, um, we're going to call this data D for data drop. And now we're going to transpose our data as well. So we call this data T. So we're going to DS core, we're going to call on the transpose function. And we're just going to call on data D. I think it only needs, yeah, it only needs one variable. And this output would now be the transposed version of the list with the dropped headers. So what we can do now is just really get rid of all that and just connect up our lists. And we can just call this um, flip with an exclamation mark, just, just to have a bit of fun. And essentially at this point, if we go back, you can see that everything's been updated. We've got data, we've got a kick value, and we've got a flip. So what I'll do is I'll just go and find another kick flip. You can see our default value of one is now registering. It's no longer disabled. So let's just take our data and see what we get. And there you go. You can see that we've processed our data through those two stages. So that custom node is now always available in our session and also others if we deploy it through a custom package. Obviously, I can take a different value and I can drop an extra list if I want to. So you can see that I'm losing a list every time I do that. But by default, it's one. So if I take out right there, it assumes the default value. So that's a basic custom node. Um, I might just show you one more, just one that's quite useful that I use quite a lot, which is um, the if function, because if is actually available in Python. So whilst I haven't covered Python on my channel yet, I'm just gonna show you a really useful little Python function, and then we'll cover it in more detail later. So let's build another custom node. So I'm just gonna go uh, Python script, and I'm just gonna add three inputs and one output in here. I'm just going to get rid of all my Python template because we're just using native Python to do this. And all we're doing is calling on an if function. So if you don't know the if function, um, don't worry too much. It's a basically like an if this, then do that, otherwise do that, which is quite familiar to like Revit families or Excel. So we're going to go if, and we're going to call on our first input in zero. We're going to check if it's equal to the Boolean true, which I think, I think is lowercase in Python. And then if we're going to say first, then is, is going to be output equals in one. Otherwise, else output equals in two. So if the first input is true, then we will take out the, 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 the next output. Otherwise, we'll take out the one after. So what we'll do here is just connect up a Boolean to that Python script. And let's just take a range from one to five and a range from one to 10. So if people know the standard if function, um, it's got a bit of an issue. So it always takes the shortest possible list that it can. So I'll just show you the difference between what these two will output. I think at the moment I might have a syntax error. Uh, Okay, yeah, I need to use capital T for true, I think. There we go. Um, I think at the moment, uh, and it's not output, sorry, it's capital O-U-T for out. Looks like I need to brush up on my um, Python as well. <laughs> so out is the data going out. And you can see that, see the bug that happens here? It always assumes the smallest list value in the default if node. But with Python, we can feed it through regardless. So that's that's the power of this little Python script. Let's say we want to actually just make this into a custom node as well. So again, we're just going to click it, right click on our white space, create custom node, and we'll just call this test, test if, just because we're testing. So we'll just say test for the description. Um, in this case, we'll just go testing, testing logic. Um, we'll just call it. So you see it straight away, it's not what we want. All the inputs have been lost, so we need to go into our custom node. And we've got our output, which is okay. You could just call this uh, like result or out or something like that. 
And obviously the other thing we need now is we need to add our inputs. So we'll just call this, just call it test. And we can say that this has to be a Boolean. And then we can just call this uh, then, because this is what happens if it's then and else for the other option. And that, that's how easy it is to make just a little custom node. Um, I think you can add notes in custom nodes as well, if you ever want to sort of annotate the logic of what you do. So Python, if, maybe that gives them some more information. You can obviously add your name, you know, your contact details in here as well. You could also add it in the Python script itself if you wanted to, just using a, using a comment line. You can say my name is blah, and people will know how to find you. Cool. Um, again, we'll just save this in our definitions folder. And you can see now our testing function works. So if this was a custom package, you can see we have like a little testing area down here. So I can grab my if node and I can do again, just a range from one to five, range from one to 10 and a Boolean. Connect up my then and my else. And there you go. You can see that now our custom node is available um, straight away. I've been building a lot of little custom nodes in my custom package already. So you can see I'm getting quite into it right now. I mean, some of them are literally just like an about that just talks about the package and who made it. But other ones are a little bit more complicated. So I'm having fun with doing things like filtering out solid geometry from lists of geometry, um, dealing with, you know, formatting date times to how I typically format the time. So you can see here, for example, this one gives me the date, but then also the date as a prefix and the time as a suffix for use in file naming. Um, so there's a lot of things you can do with this um, that are quite fun. Simple things like a, a wait or a pass-through node that's in quite a lot of packages already. Um, I've built like a string ciphering function. So it, it, you can get, it can get quite fun. Um, so I'll, I will have this on my GitHub if anyone's interested, but I probably won't release it to the custom package um, area just yet because I'm still building it. Um, but that's pretty much how to build custom nodes. So hopefully that helps get you started. Um, so in future, the, the next video that I cover in this sort of overarching part of my channel will be how to make a custom package. It'll be quite a quick video because it's not a super complex process. Um, and then from then, we're going to do a quick series on Python fundamentals. So not Python in context of Dynamo, but a lot of syntax in Python. So for example, that if function that I just used in this video, I'll go through that in more detail, but we'll look at things like iterating data types and we'll do them just in little quick, quick tip videos. From there, I'll jump into Python and Dynamo properly, and we'll look at some things like the Revit API and how you can access it and also make some more intelligent custom nodes that do things in Revit. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much all for today. So again, the files are on my GitHub, which is the link here. Um, I try to keep it pretty up to date. So by the time this video comes out, the content from this video should be available. Um, but that's all for today. So um, hopefully you found that useful. And I guess uh, just a reminder for anyone that's just gonna go out and start building custom nodes and custom packages, um, try not to build things that are already already exist. Um, it's not the best when we have a lot of replication. The only reason I'm replicating some nodes is because I want them just to be conveniently available um, for my scripts when I start releasing them, because I'll start using some of my custom nodes in some of my scripts that I release for use. Um, and just remember that if you do make custom nodes and packages and you put them online, you should maintain them as Dynamo uh, improves and changes. Um, don't just abandon them because no one will know if they're good or not. Anyway, um, if you're not already following and subscribing to my channel, feel free to do so. I make about two to three videos every week and aim to for a very long time on lots of topics. Um, so thanks for watching today and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.